All right, suppose she did die in the bathtub. So Jessup surprised her and killed her. He dressed the body and threw it in the pool to make it look accidental. So no, sir, that's not possible. Pick that radio. You know why? You see, the bathroom, the bathtub, the faucet itself, everything was bone dry, including the towels. Not even slightly moist. That was the first thing I checked, sir. No, she had to have drowned before six. Maybe even before five. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been that dry. Long before Jessup got there. As a matter of fact, just about the time that you came home for supper. Listen, I believe you killed your wife. And I believe you either killed Janice Caldwell or you're covering up for it. You just lost your badge, my friend. Come on, come on, keep digging. Yes, sir. At first I thought Mr. Corbo was responsible, but that didn't work out because of the nightgown business. And then the next night when your wife was killed and you had that terrific alibi, then it suddenly hit me. You were in it together and you're trying to blame Artie Jessup. And the truth is that Jessup was nowhere near either house either night. Commissioner. He wasn't, huh? All right, how do you explain these? Janice Caldwell's jewels. I can explain it. You took them from the Caldwell house, you hit them, and today you planted them here to incriminate Mr. Jessup. But you're crazy. You can't prove anything like that. Sergeant Randall? Here, sir. You. Commissioner Halpin says he found those jewels under your mattress. <clears throat> That's crazy. You're a liar. Hey, I don't even live here. What? I can verify that. He doesn't live here. I live here. These are my shirts. That's my underwear. My brother-in-law. It's my nephew, my niece. I haven't lived there long. Just moved in. You see, the apartment was vacant for three weeks. I just signed the lease. You looked in the closet. Those were my pajamas and my bathrobe. The file folder, the, the report on the desk. Yes, sir, I'll have to take responsibility for that. You see, I persuaded Mr. Jessup to telephone Mr. Caldwell, knowing that Caldwell would contact you. I was sure that once you knew the true identity of the burglar, you'd try and incriminate him. So this morning, very early, just after I signed the lease, I made up a new file folder on Mr. Jessup. Everything was the same, except this address. Only one person beside myself knew this address. That was you, sir. Clear this table. Where'd you find those? Linen closet in the hallway. Edna, how could you? no idea how they got there. Better not say another word. But... Edna, he's right. Do you intend to charge her formally, Captain? It's up to Lieutenant Colombo. It's his case. What do you mean it's his case? I thought he was... We know what you thought, Mr. Kingston. Lieutenant? Well, I think we can get started with the fingerprinting. Let's get the kit. Careful there, be very careful. Gee, there's something, aren't they? Pastels, you know. May I ask what this is all about, Lieutenant? Both of them. Lieutenant? Oh, Mr. Kingston. 
Uh, yes, just give us a moment, please. Do you mind? We're getting a few. Good. I'd like an answer, if you don't mind. Uh, well, I'd have to start with your uncle's will. What about it? Well, you see, he pulled the rug out from under you when he left his collection to Mrs. Matthews, so you uh, only had one thing that you could do. Murder him and blame it on her. I hope you realize the full import of what you're saying, Lieutenant. There are witnesses here. You see, under the law, anyone who criminally causes the death of someone else can't inherit from that person. Is that right, Mr. Simpson? That's correct. So if Mrs. Matthews is convicted, you're next in line. Everything goes to you. That's why you planted the gun. And that's why you planted the wrapping paper. And that's why you planted these paintings. Dale! I can't believe it! Now, but you'd like to, wouldn't you? It'd get you right off the hook. All right, Lieutenant. You claim that I planted these paintings? Suppose you prove it. Can we? Yeah. Yeah, with fingerprints. Uh -huh. Sorry to disappoint you, Lieutenant. Fingerprints won't help you at all. My fingerprints are all over those paintings. My uncle and I unwrapped them when they came back from the exhibit. I told you, didn't I? I told you myself. They're covered with my prints. No, we're not looking for your prints. What? Do you remember the time that I was in your apartment and you came in with some paintings? And you said that they were watercolors and you wanted to evaluate them. And remember, I wanted to see them and you wouldn't let me. And I even touched them. You touched them? Yes, my fingerprints are on those paintings. Now, if Mrs. Matthews is guilty, how could my fingerprints get on paintings that she stole? Uh, this is entrapment. It's a setup, that's all. You, you, you touched those paintings just now while I wasn't looking. You saw him do it, didn't you? You put your prints on those paintings while you were bent over watching them when they were working on it. He touched them. You touched, you... Just some inferior wines, uh, I was trying to... Chateau de Sol, 1938, inferior. Well, a great label doesn't always denote a great wine, you know. Thursday the 20th. That's what did it, sir. You know, it got very hot in that vault with the ventilation turned off, but that one day, that Thursday, it hit 109 degrees outside. So inside, the temperature went way up, over 150 degrees. Wine overheated. That was it. That's why I mentioned that hot day outside the restaurant. I knew it would ring a bell. I figured you'd have to get around to disposing of the wine sooner or later. It must be killing you to throw all this stuff away. Yeah, you've no idea. It's like... How did you know? How did I know? Well, sir, do you mind if I smoke? No. Oh, no. I did a terrible thing, sir. You remember that day when we were in the vault and I kept saying if somebody got locked in here, there would be no way for them to get out? And in order to prove me wrong, you closed the door and you left me in there alone? 
Well, I took that opportunity to steal a bottle of port. Your port. Ferrier Vintage Port. 1945. That's right, sir. That bottle of wine in the restaurant, that was your wine. See, the wine steward was in on it, and you did the rest. I certainly did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. That's ironic. Sir? Well, I, I'm probably one of the few men in the world who could have told you that wine was spoiled and, and told you it was because it was overheated. Yes, sir. It required a very delicate palate. Hundred and nine degrees? Is that some kind of a record for that day in the year? No, sir. <laughs> Notebook. <laughs> No, sir. It hit 111 in 1938 and 111 in 1870. The Weather Bureau doesn't keep records before then. That's a pity. I would have liked it to be a record. Shall we go? Uh, we'll take my car, sir. It's parked right around the corner. I'll send somebody to pick up yours. Do I get a confession, sir? Oh, yes, I'll confess. There's no remorse attached to it. It's a great weight off my mind, as a matter of fact. Why is that, sir? Well, you see, uh, Karen had guessed the truth. She is turning the thumbscrews on me. She's uh, quite a little iron maiden, that lady. I guess the freedom is purely relative. in my entire life where I was ever really happy. I took the liberty of bringing along a surprise. Hmm? <laughs> Monte Fiasconi. That's an excellent dessert wine. I was hoping you'd like it. And very suitable for the final course. You've learned very well, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. One more thing. <laughs>